welcome back. So, I ended off buying a BB gun. That's where I ended it up. After I bought the BB gun and stuff, then we went back on rides. Sorry. After all the rides, she went, got uh, some little trinkets or whatever you want to call it. After that, I asked her, what do you want to do? She said, didn't really care. Wanted to go back to my house? Sure. So I got in a van and I parked in a ditch because, you know, it's a very narrow road. Not being an idiot to other drivers. So I opened my car door, you know, the driver door, because she doesn't want to drive the Ford minivan. So I drive it. I open the car door and it basically just slams right back on me because I'm on like a type of hill. She opens the door and slams right into her face almost because it just opens. <laughs> After getting in, oh, what is this idiot behind me doing? Going so slow. Like, so slow I could walk up and down the freaking road slow. Not kidding. He finally picked up speed though. Probably just pulled out of somewhere. But he finally picked up some speed, passed us, and then I went. And I go to the f intersection of 61 and, oh, what is it? I don't know the other intersection there, but it's by 42. And uh, stupid uh, RPMs and the miles per gallon and the gas and the heat and cold. It's all wacko. So I smacked it. Yeah, it works. Then I'm driving on to 61 there and this idiot in front of me just slow like usual. So I pass him. I'm in the fast lane now, okay, not in the slow lane. I'm in the fast lane. I look at my gas, okay, gas is good. I still got a few more dollars to spend before I take it back home. So, I said, when you get home, you want to do anything, just chill? Well, okay, I don't want to go home right now. So I said, okay, we can drive home, I guess, the long way. Past Kruger Park, up to... Um, well, close to the golf course there, where I went and had a party last Christmas. And, uh, I went that way and I saw my dad. He was on the motorcycle and he stopped and I stopped and we were talking and then Kayla woke up from her nap because she fell asleep. And I thought he said, turn around, I want to talk to you. So I do a U-turn on the intersection. No car there, so don't worry. And he's speeding off and I'm like... What the hell does he want? So I'm speeding to catch up to him. He lost me like a whole two miles ahead of me. I finally catch up to him at an intersection and he turns on to 61 and I'm following him and I'm gaining speed just to catch him to see what the heck he wants. Well, apparently he turns into Wabasha and I thought he's going straight to the new dairy, which is by DQ. So I'm going that way. And I'm like, that's not him. Well, I'm in the intersection already, so I got to turn around. So I go... To the dairy, because, you know, don't know if that was him or not. So I went there anyway. No, he's not there. Okay, back home. There he is at home. And I said, what do you want? Oh, nothing. I just wanted to see where you were going. Uh, we were in Kellogg for, like, almost the whole day. Oh, okay. After that, we uh, watched the Packer game. Um, oh, great. Now it's starting to rain. Uh, put this bucket inside. So after that, watch the Packer game. Am I a Packer fan? Football fan? No. No Packer, no football fan in me. Would I watch it? Yeah, because there's nothing else on. And my girlfriend likes Packers. So I might as well just watch the Packers with her. I'm in the garage, by the way. So... Watch the Packers. Um, I believe they won. They were playing like uh, NFL or, or a different football team. I don't know what it was. My uncle likes them though. And uh, after the game, um, what else did we do? After the football game, we had to go get bread. So I got in the car. I still had money in there. Went to Quick Trip. Got a lotto ticket. And the thing I like about living in a small town is, uh, <laughs> well, 
my neighbor, well, if you want to consider him a neighbor, he's probably like one, two, three, third, the third, the third house down from this hill here, from 9th Street to Jefferson. His name's Tommy Leckler. He still is with his parents. Um, he was working there, and I said, give me a lotto ticket. You know, I said, well, give me Powerball, because, you know, I said, give me a lotto ticket, and he didn't know which one. It's $2, so that's not bad. As he's doing it, I got my wallet, like, you want to see my ID? No, I know who you are. I know how old you are. Okay. That's one thing I, love about, I like about living in a small town. They know you. They know how, you, how old you are. They know where you live. BPing in town here, same thing. Same thing in Pepin. I go to Pepin, I don't know, a couple of times a month to pick up my friend or whatever. They make great sandwiches there, probably better than Subway. There was this guy working, and I said, hey, do you want me to show you my ID? No, you're good. So, oh, now it stops raining. Well, it's still sprinkling. And so, after picking up the bread, we had to drop off a mail at the post office, and I'm going towards the post office, and my girlfriend's like, hey, there's a mailbox by Super Value. Well, I'm going down a one-way street now, because that's when they did it. They just said one way. It's not a two-way anymore. Down by the skate park. So I drop it off at the post office, and I'm like, well, bacon is not done for probably 20, 20 30 minutes or something. So I'm like, well, what to do? You go home, you gotta wait. Might as well just go drive around. So I'm driving towards um, Malone's Park and the boat launch, and I think of an idea. Well, I haven't seen Michael in, I don't know, almost a month. So I'm like, what the hell, we'll go see Mike. He uh, is buried out there at the cemetery over by the hospital. And as I'm driving there, and I'm like, we're going to go see someone. And she's like, oh, I'm like, you'll see. I don't want you there for the next, like, hundred years. Because she, I love her very much. And she kind of drives like a fast demon. One hand on the wheel, kind of, you know, swerves in and out of traffic. But not like my other friend here, John Gilbertson. He drives worse. No offense, John, but it's true. So I said, I don't want you here for the next, like, hundred years. Then she realized where we're going. And then she mentioned, uh, oh, I saw him, you know, Michael, like, a month ago. And I'm like, we've only been dating for, like, two months. So you saw him, like, right when we started dating again or before? She didn't give me an answer on that one. But after seeing him, I took a picture of his grave, fixed it up, and uh, I said, well, I want to show you something. And it was probably a couple hundred yards from Michael's grave. I'm like, well, let's drive. Well, let's get some exercise, she says. I guess so. So we go around, um, we're on a gravel driveway, not cutting through people's graves, because that's just, you know, that's so rude. So we're on the gravel driveway, and I look back, and someone's pulling in. I'm like, oh, someone's pulling in, and we're in their way. I'll just back up all the way out or whatever. I don't know how they got out, but they're out by the time we got back. I went to see... Um, I guess it's like World War II or World War Three vets. There's probably like six or seven stones in one row and then like three in a different with a flag. Each of them had a penny on them except like one. So I had a penny and I'm like, okay, well, it's heads up because that's what they all say. So I put a penny there. Why? To show them respect and thank them that they've fought through this war. I think it was like World War Three or whatever, you know. So give them respect. Thank them a lot. Otherwise, if we didn't have World War Three, what would we be today? <laughs> you know? So after that, we uh, talked about our future on our way back to the car. And just not going to tell you the future. Because, you know, it's just we don't know if it's going to happen or not. Meaning we will stay together, yeah. But we just don't know what's going to happen. We just got to plan it the way it goes. She thinks big. I think big too. But, you know, it's we just don't know. We've been together since July 2nd of this year. And if we stayed together, it would be October 31st of this year. It would be one year anniversary. But, you know, it's the way it goes. So on our way back to the car, um, we're talking, got to the car. 
drove slow out of the cemetery because that shows other people respect. And then saying, well, it's not even done yet, so let's just go onto the highway and go home that way. So I went on the highway and, okay, clear to go, on to 61, back to town. I'm gaining speed, probably 20, 25 miles an hour, maybe even faster. I don't know exactly. I look in my mirror, and holy shit, a semi. I look in my mirror for, like that, and boom, a semi pops out like he just, he was invisible type thing. So I had to gas the damn thing, and she's like, whoa. Boom, there you go, you know. And, you know, the semi stayed behind me because he slowed down, so I, I was in front of him. The entire time all the way home, you know, he was way behind me, I guess, but whatever. Pulled in the driveway, sat out here in front of the car for like 20 minutes, talking. Went inside with the bread and uh, that's how it went. She stayed for a bit longer. I think she watched like a drama. I was tired on the couch. I don't exactly know. The drama is Korean drama, okay? Because Ben likes that stuff, and, you know, he got my mother addicted to it now. So he was watching that, and um, she said she's going to go home. I said, okay, I'll walk you to your car like I always do, because that's the gentleman you're supposed to do. So I walked her to her car. We sat and talked for, like, ten minutes, and then she left. So, and when I go see her parents, she'll probably walk me to my car. You know, it's just, it's the way it goes. Because usually when I, uh, when she comes, I always walk her to the car at the end of the day. Whenever I go see Logan, she usually comes outside and says goodbye, and then we leave, she goes back in the house. So, you know, it's the way that goes. Other friends just say, bye, see you tomorrow, and they stay in the house while you're going outside, like, What? You don't want to say goodbye one more last time before I pull out your driveway or, or give a hug or a kiss or just chat for, chat for a little bit longer. Pfft, what friend are you, you know? You get people like that, but, you know, my friendship is strong through all my friends and all that stuff. I mean, I've known my best friend Logan since preschool, and we're still friends. And, hello, I'm not even in school anymore. She moved in eighth grade, and I was in eighth grade when she was in eighth grade. We stayed from 8th grade until now. We're still friends. We didn't see each other for like almost a whole year. Nothing changed in between that whole year of not seeing each other. Still the same. Still the same strong friendship, same things in common, everything. You know why? She hit me with a goddamn truck in the head. And it hurt. That's why it's still strong. Why? It's, it just is. She hit me. I was supposed to be her friend. They wanted me to be her friend. Did I want to be friends with someone like that? No. But it happened. I'm glad it happened. You know why? I would have never met Kayla. I would have never met this girl named Logan. What would my life be right now? I don't know. Crap, probably. To be honest, I don't have a lot of friends out there. Logan, Kayla... Brandon, I consider him kind of like a friend, but, you know, it's he lives way up in Washington, D.C. now. That's where he works. He used to live in Wabasha here. Um, maybe some other people. I exactly don't remember their names, but they're on my Facebook list. I would kind of consider them friends. You know, but, you know, I wasn't popular in high school. I was like, oh, the nerd. Well, not the nerd, I guess, but the... Idiot that doesn't know crap. Let's pick on him and his family. Because they basically picked on me, my brothers, and my sister. And my sister is still in school, but she's online now. So that's the best thing. So we basically got picked on from like... It started. It really started when it hit 7th grade. So 7th grade till about... We left in... I believe 10th grade. I don't remember when we left that school. But from then until then, you know, exactly. Picked on every single day. If it wasn't every single day, it was every other day. Went to the principal. He didn't do shit. He's fat. I don't care what I say about him. Um, or the superintendent, or the... Uh, 
I don't think there was any vice pres pres principal, sorry, or the uh, dean of students or anything like that. You know, and you'll say, oh, you'll always get bullies in school and in life. Yeah, you'll get people in life that are retarded. Sorry, but you know, it's the truth. Meaning retarded, meaning a bully. So, graduated from um, Blue Sky Charter School, probably the best school ever that I've ever went to. We'll consider if I have kids, they're going to go to that school. Definitely going to that school. And yeah, it's the way it, that'll go as well. I was eating dinner today and my sister wouldn't eat uh, her food. I said, if I had kids, I, wouldn't, I would not make them leave this table until they ate all the food. Meaning the food on their plate. My mother's like, I thought you didn't want kids. I'm like, I can change my mind. Why do I want kids? Well, they're cute. Well, when they're young, they are, but when they grow up, they're, oh, I want this, I want that, you know, I want my license and shit like that. But I decided I want one kid. My wife, my future wife, whoever it's going to be, wants a kid, that's cool. If I decide not to have a kid and we're married, it's, she's going to have to deal with it or we have to draw straws. We're not going to divorce because of that stupid situation. We'll just have to deal with one of the um, other decisions. So if I decide not to have kids, she wants kids, we take a huge, huge vote on it, see what goes on, and decide from there. You know? Uh, my brother Ben, he wants a kid, and he's not even in a relationship. He wants a girlfriend from, like, Korea. He's not even looking for girlfriends. My parents have been together... Since IG's, I don't know how long. My grandparents over here in Wabasha here, the one that don't live that far, they've been together for 54 years, and he's made that almost a year ago, so it's going to be 55 probably. 55 years together. People usually don't last that long. Probably they last 30 years, and they're like, ugh, I can't marry you anymore. Let's get a divorce. Or they don't even last long. They last a couple years, and they're gone. So, yeah, that's the way that goes. And it's just sad. My neighbor here, uh, Tom and Jan, they've been together for a very long time. Um, uh, Glenn and Jackie, they've been together for a long time. They have two kids. Um, and, you know, I know some people around the neighborhood that's been together for a longer time than that. But the longest I know is 50-some years. That's my grandparents. So, yeah. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. I guess that'll be it for this video. I'm just going to cut back on the videos, and I'm sorry again. There's no light except right there. If I see a video or something that looks cool or that's interesting, I will tape it. But it ain't going to be like every single day anymore, you know, because there's not, just not a lot to do right now. Maybe in the future I might tape a lot more. Just not right now. Maybe like, like I said, when I get my license and have a GoPro, I'll do a lot of driving things probably, and that's where probably most of them come from. So like always, thanks again for watching, rate, comment, subscribe. Take care of yourselves.